Hi, in this video we will be doing some relatively simple modifications to a Sony XDR F1 high definition radio. Um, the mods we'll be doing here are to improve cooling and to improve the memory backup. Um, I have to thank Brian Beasley, K6STI, uh, for the inspiration to do these modifications. I'll provide links to his very thorough uh, summary of this radio and its performance and some modifications that uh, people have submitted to improve its performance. And I also have to thank uh, XDR Guy. I'll put a link to uh, his website. Um, he will provide very uh, fully modded uh, Sony XDR F1 radios with uh, not only these mods, but uh, some, some substantial audio and uh, tuner performance enhancements. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do to open this up, there's five screws on the bottom. They're marked by these little arrows. Uh, so let's go ahead and get those removed. After we remove those five screws, there's three here on the back um, that we also need to remove. These two little guys and this slightly bigger one. I actually don't need to remove these three screws to open the case, but we're going to have to remove them to move the circuit board in a second here. So now we can lift the top off, and the top is off. So we'll set that aside for a moment. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, the, uh, the main thing we want to do is improve the cooling and extend the memory life, the backup memory life. Um, you can actually see, I think you can see here, the discoloration on this board from the, the heat buildup. These things tend to run really hot, and so we're going to add a cooling fan, a very small cooling fan, uh, inside the unit. Um, I've found a location where we can get uh, eight and a half volts DC, and this little 12 volt fan will run just fine off of that. We'll use a little uh, diode back bias to, to uh, fix that up. And then we're going to add this super cap, uh, this super cap uh, with a small resistor um, for uh, improving the memory backup. Um, I've printed here, and I'll uh, include a larger version of this um, at the end of this video. Uh, this is from the schematic, which you can download from hifienginecom uh, And uh, of course, the schematic is uh, for the bottom side of this board, so here it looks backwards because I've inverted it <clears throat> so that I can more easily identify the places that we'll be modifying. And what we're going to be doing is uh, adding this fan, as I mentioned, along with the diode, and we're going to tap that in here on a couple spots, you'll see that in a moment. And then we're also going to add in this 1.5 farad capacitor with a small resistor um, at another couple spots that should be reasonably easy to access. And uh, let's go ahead and start doing that. We're going to want to loosen up this board so that we can uh, kind of lift it out of the way. I think I can do all the soldering I need to do from the top side, um, but I don't, I just want to have room to get my soldering iron in there. So to remove this board, this main board, there's uh, screws again marked with arrows here, here, here and those screws we removed off the back. Um, so let me go ahead and do that now. And I'll... Okay, I've got the board uh, pulled out, so I've got a little bit more working room. So the next step now is to wire in the fan and the super cap. And so the fan is going to be connected in on an eight and a half volt DC supply, which I can get across this capacitor, C302, um, 
The plus side, I'll tap in right on the plus lead there. Um, the negative side is ground, and this jumper is ground, so I'll be able to get the diode and the fan across that. For the super cap, we need to come down here to uh, uh, diode D914, uh, which is this guy. Uh, let me find him here. This guy right there is D914. Um, so we're going to come from one side of that to our 47 ohm resistor and then on to the positive side of the super cap and then the negative side of the super cap will go to ground which happens to be this jumper here JW11 is a ground point so let's go ahead and I'll move the cameras around a little bit and get the soldering iron heated up and we'll wire this stuff in okay hopefully that's a little better camera angle. So what I need to do is connect my diode across this capacitor C302 and we're gonna put the striped end to the positive side of this capacitor on this wire and then I'm gonna loop the negative on the ground here and uh, leave those leads there so that I can hook up the fan uh, connector uh, to those. So. Let me do that now. Okay. Now I can hook my fan leads onto these guys here. Positive side to the positive side of the capacitor. Okay, there's our fan connector. I'm eventually gonna mount the fan right, right along here, but now we need to get the uh, capacitor in there. Okay, for the super cap here, the first thing I'm gonna do is put a little uh, jumper cable on here and uh, use a little bit of heat shrink. So we'll get the red and the black. I've already tinned those leads, and so we're going to go black onto the negative lead here. Wrap that around a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. We'll get our heat shrink on there. And that part will be good to go. Okay, we've got our super cap ready, our color-coded wires. So now I need to prepare this 47 ohm resistor. And what we're going to do there is slide that underneath this side of D, D914. And we'll solder that up. And this will be connected, the other end of this resistor will connect to the positive side of our super cap. Oh, I didn't need you to go under there yet. There we go. Okay, now we need the negative side of the super cap is going to go on to JW11, which is a ground. And so let me wrap that around here. Okay, and the negative side is going to go on to the other end of the 47 ohm resistor. And let me get a piece of heat shrink to protect that. And we'll solder that positive side of the super cap to the 47 ohm resistor. Put some heat shrink down over all that. Give it a little bit of protection. Okay. I'm going to use Velcro uh, to attach the super cap right there, and the fan will go right in here. So let me go ahead and Put this circuit board back in its spot and we'll do a little bit of testing and uh, make sure everything's working okay. So this guy has to slide into the back here first, just like that. Okay. Put our little screws back in. And I can also put the screws in the back, back in. The larger screw holds in the FM antenna connector. And the two smaller screws go on the other side. Okay, moment of truth. Let's uh, plug in our fan here. Set me right there. 
Make sure nobody's shorting out against anybody and let's power up. Okay, the clock is blinking, that's good. Turn the power on. Fan is spinning, that's extra good. We have airflow. All the functions are looking still good here. We'll let the capacitor here charge up and then I'm gonna pull the power and uh, see how long it retains its memory because before you could barely go more than a few seconds and it would be have already lost all its memory. So let me, uh, in fact, uh, just power it off here again this way and the fan should go off. And the fan is going off, that's good. And let's pull the plug. So the unit's been unplugged now for oh, probably about half an hour and uh, let's plug it back in and see if it retained all its memory. And the clock came back, the clock came back to the correct time, so that's good. Turn it on. And it went back to the last station that was tuned. So I believe our modifications are a success. Let me uh, go ahead and mount the super cap and the fan. And I'll uh, again use Velcro for that. And we'll show you that when it's all done. All right. It's, uh, everything's mounted in there now. It seems to be working great. The fan is Velcroed on the bottom. And then I put... Um, a zip tie around it just to keep it from wiggling. Um, the super cap is also mounted there with a little bit of Velcro and so we're going to button it all up and call it good. Again, I will post um, in the description some links and the parts list that I used um, and so hopefully some of you find this to be useful. Again, some simple modifications to improve the cooling and the backup memory retention for your Sony FDR uh, X1 HD radio.